Hi, this is Bill Watkins. Last week, we started a study of angels. We talked about how that the word angel, both in Hebrew and in Greek, means messenger. And while sometimes it's applied to human messengers, it's primarily applied to these heavenly beings who are called angels, messengers. They're called the hosts of God, as though they're an army from God. They're called the council. They're called watchers. We've, we've talked about a number of things that they were called. Fascinating creatures that are described in 34 of the 66 books of the Bible and mentioned 196 times. It's worth noting that angels are mentioned, even though not at the primary focus, angels are mentioned in such a way that we would do well to spend a little time looking at them. I want to begin this week with Hebrews chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, where he says, To which of the angels did he say, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? He said, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to do service to those who will inherit salvation? The Bible says, first of all, that they are spirits, that primarily they are not human, they are not flesh and blood, even though they appear and look like flesh and blood at times, angels are, in fact, spirits. And here's an amazing thing. They have been sent forth to do service to those who will inherit salvation. Angels work for you. They work in behalf of God in order to see to it that you were saved. They work hard at doing that. So many things we don't know about them, but we do know that that's what they are. We mentioned in Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 last time that they are called principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, uh, all of those that are mentioned and powers that he mentions. Four of those in Colossians 1 16 are used generally in a good sense about the angels of God. And some of them are used in an evil sense about the angels of Satan. Satan also has angels who are his messengers. Do you remember that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 25, depart from me into eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. The devil has messengers too. God uses more than just himself. He uses a group of beings that are lesser than him, but greater than us to be able to do what needs to be done. We are a little lower than the angels. David makes that really clear. Others make that really clear in the book of Hebrews as well. We're told that our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, the powers, the world rulers of this darkness, the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. He's talking about angels here. And I want you to notice that he says, what we're really fighting against are not people. If if the people around you seem to be your enemies, the fact of the matter is that they are not, but you do have enemies, and they are working very hard to destroy you. Principalities and powers and world rulers of this darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, Ephesians chapter 6, and particularly in verse 12. In Colossians chapter 2, it talks about Jesus and after his resurrection and through the cross, that he is triumphant over the principalities and powers and makes a public show of them. He's talking about angels. Jesus overcame the evil angels. And, and there's a couple of other words that I find fascinating for angels in, the, in, in Archangelos in the scripture, which is in the New Testament, archangel. What does that mean? Because in the final day, when the Lord comes again to receive his own, what does it say? The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we always be with the Lord. Archangel, what does that mean? As there are principalities and powers and dominions, what is he talking about? Levels of angelic authority. And there are some angels that are greater than other angels. The archangels would be the greatest of the angels. In Jude verse 9, he mentions one of the archangels, and his name is Michael, the archangel, Jude verse 9. So when you look at them, you need to understand that we are surrounded by a spiritual host of spiritual beings, but their purpose is to be in service of you. You are not alone. 
When you face temptation, when difficult days come, you are never alone. God's angels surround you. Thanks for watching.